I think 2021 is going to be probably one of the best years we've ever seen in real estate. You know what the good thing is though? The good thing is that... I think 2021 is going to be a really, really incredible year for real estate. I think if you look at if you look at the fundamentals of real estate right now, the industry itself, it's really set up for a big run, in my opinion, for a lot of different reasons. Right? There's a lot of cash on the sidelines. People aren't spending cash because interest rates are low. They'd rather borrow money than spend their cash, which means they have cash waiting for a market to crash. Which means there's a cushion. There's a cushion if the market does does crash of, of any sorts. That's what we saw in the pandemic. Start market crash, right? For for a day, you know, and people dump money in, and what happens? It comes back up. You know, all the buyers that are buying right now are end users. There's no speculation. Nobody's buying anything to sell it next year. That tells me that all the people that are buying can afford what they're buying. Uh, all the regulations on lending right now, all the hoops you have to jump through to get a loan. There's so many things. The inventory being low, there, there's so many, like every single statistic I look at when I analyze the real estate industry tells me that we could be in the beginning of a, a huge run. You know, we may see a real estate boom. That's, that's the way I see it. I could be completely wrong. I mean, it could crash tomorrow, it could crash next year, whatever. But I, I just, I don't see it. When I look at the fundamentals, I don't see it. I think 2021 is going to be probably one of the best years we've ever seen in real estate. It's very exciting right now. This period between now and the first of the year, to me, is a very exciting time. It's kind of like the, the anticipation and the excitement is kind of building up. You know, believe it or not, you know, even though there's been a, it's been a really incredible year for real estate, I think there's still a lot of pent up demand too. And I think there's a lot of buyers who can't find what they want because there's no inventory. I, uh, I'm pretty optimistic. I'm very bullish on uh, 2021. Yeah, Ricky. Yeah. So, well, just to kind of add to that, uh, I mean, 2008, I was in middle school. So, um, if you were working in 2008, like, do you see similarities to what was going on then to what's happening now? 100% not, dude. Straight, straight opposite. Complete opposite. So. In 2000, it wasn't 2008, it was 2003 and 4 uh, when everything happened bad. Okay, 2008, the market started to come down in 2005 and it took it three years for the stock market and the rest of the world to catch up to what was really happening. 2003 and 4 is really the years where everything went crazy and the balloon busted, the bubble popped. So the differences are uh, lending restrictions, right? Back then you could literally say you made a million dollars a year when you only made 50,000 a year. You didn't have to document it and they would give you a loan based on what you said. You didn't have to prove you made a million dollars. So so there were so many people getting loans that they couldn't afford, right? And they were buying on speculation. They were buying just to flip the next month, the next year, whatever. And so right now you see really high regulation on lending Right, you have to document not only your income, but you know <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff. Like you got to cut off your pinky. You got to you know make sure that your firstborn has a you know like it, it's it's insane what all you have to do to get a loan these days. And so because of the regulations on lending, that's a huge difference. And also our buyers nowadays, our buyers are end users. The buyers back then were just complete speculation to, to sell it. That they couldn't afford the loan, and they were buying it to sell it. So if they can't sell it, what happens? They can't afford it. And so, so it goes back to the bank. That's not the situation now. People can afford what they're buying. The banks are making sure they can afford it. There's no speculation and the cash. Back then, there was no cash on the sideline waiting for deals. Everybody deplored their cash into the market because nobody thought it could go down. Right now, you're seeing people that went through 2008 that are scared that that's gonna happen again, so they're hoarding their cash. You know, it's a completely different ball game, man. I think we're, I think we're fixing to see a big run, but that's just my thoughts. But yeah, completely different ball game. So do you think that, or, or not do you think, rather, did the data show that volume of purchases was it a lot higher then than it was in, let's say, 2019 or so? If I had to take a wild guess, I would say we're somewhere around the same volume. Maybe a higher, I'd have to look at data to see as far as like volume, as far as how many millions have sold, how many billions in the country have sold. But in terms of number of transactions, I think we're somewhere around the same. There's a lot of things holding the market back, right? Appraisals, you know, that's another thing. Like back in 2002 and three and four, your, your banker could literally pick the appraiser and tell the appraiser what to appraise the property for. 
right? Now, the banker has to go through a third party vendor to pick the appraiser so the banker can't talk to the appraiser, right? It has to go through a third party and then when the appraiser sends the appraisal back to the, to the bank, the bank is like, uh, no, that's too high. They'll make them go redo it, you know, based on whatever comps they saw. I've got buyers right now that would pay more than what the market is right now, but because we can't get it to appraise, see, that's keeping the market down too. That's another reason why, I, that's just another fundamental reason why I see a nice little run coming is because I know that there are buyers that will pay more than today's prices. And it's a good thing, right? You don't wanna see the market just double. That's what happened in 2003 and four, prices doubled. And you don't wanna see that because that will spark a huge you know, decline after all that's said and done. You want a nice, steady, slow market, slowly increasing market. You know, that's healthy. This is an extremely healthy market. You know what the good thing is though? The good thing is that it doesn't matter. The bigger punchline here is that it doesn't matter. Okay, if prices double over two years like they did last time and it crashes and burns, or say we're at the peak and it's gonna crash and burn next year, great. Doesn't matter, why? Because if you go back through history and you go back through all those different times, closings continue to happen every single day. And if we're doing what we need to do to get out and talk to the, more, talk to the most people with the best intentions, and build our personal brand and just keep grinding. It doesn't matter what the market's doing. We don't have to worry about what it's gonna do. We just gotta worry about what we're gonna do. 